Electria Force, and we're going to be putting in the battery pack today. <clears throat> the controller is uh, fixed and it's been back almost for four or five months now, and uh, just been waiting for the right time and uh, all the batteries to get everything going. So we're waiting for Dale, and we'll uh, be plugging some stuff in. See you in a bit. Okay, so we got a red shrink wrapped wire that this is one, yep, part is of this Selectria car. Right. This one goes to the front to the gray gang plug that plugs in to the controller to send plus battery bank voltage into the controller. This one is minus for this bank of batteries. So we go plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus all the way to here bringing this back to minus. So this is negative out from this batch of batteries. If so that's the other one that, yeah, that goes into the car. Goes into the front box. front box. This one goes into the front box to the four batteries up there. And it is our intent when we get there, of course, to hook it to the first positive up there because we're series connecting these, which will lead us to a negative at the end of those four. We can put a meter across these here and we'll be measuring these eight 12 volt batteries. Okay, let's do that, huh? All right. Let me drive it. Okay, we're on um, DC volts, not AC volts, or resistance or amps, and we're on the 200 volt scale because we know we're getting up around that kind of voltage. The black lead goes to common, and the red lead goes to voltage. And now we should be able to measure the voltage in this battery bank, negative to positive, and we have 102 volts. And I'm connected positively. If I hook these up backwards, we'll get minus 102 volts. See? There's a little minus symbol yeah. on the front. So now we go up front and see if we got 100 volts. Watch, watch there. your head. <laughs> now, the place that we think these wires are coming to up here is we believe that the positive one goes to positive right here in this plug that goes to the controller. So I'm on it. And we believe that the negative one goes to this battery bank, and there it is. Yeah. 102 volts. So we, now we're going to make our interconnections here, and we'll wind up with our full system voltage, 140 or thereabouts, on these two to go to the controller. So that's just great. We got connection from the back to the front, huh? Yes. yes we're done with that. We have to remember here now, while hooking up these batteries is, that this connection comes from the negative of the last battery in the series at the rear. So, since everything is in series, it needs to be hooked to this positive. And to do that... Um, I mean, and that's, just, a, that's a tricky little section right there. you got to know that. you got to know yeah, what's going on with electrics. Yeah, exactly, electricity. because you'd, be, you'd think back there, okay, it's hooked to negative on the last battery, so I better hook it to negative here. You know, you always go negative, negative, positive, positive. But no, we're in a series connection. And when you're connecting things in series, we definitely need to uh, come to the positive here, which I'm authorized to know. <laughs> so we got half the front battery box put together. Yes, the bottom half, the negative cable coming from the rear hooks to the plus of the first bottom battery. Its minus goes to the plus of the second bottom battery. And its minus is coming up here, which means we want this to go to the plus of the first top battery and then it's minus over to the plus on the final battery and the last connection will be the minus of this last battery into this minus that goes to the plug for the controller. So that's what we're doing here. That's the purpose for the use of the bulb. So actually at this stage we're ready to Go get bring the controller. Out the controller okay. start. We've got the controller installed. It's plugged in to the motor. It's plugged into the battery wires, but we haven't hooked up the last wire yet because we've been instructed to dissipate any latent voltages, and I'm about to do that using this light bulb. Connect the light bulb to the battery, and then, ooh, I can feel it now. I can feel it all now. And then we connect this across, and look, it's lighting up that light bulb. But you see the bulb going dim? Mm-hmm. Dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. We're dissipating voltage. So it worked. Right on. So what we've done, we've 
connected the controller to the batteries, the controller to the motor, the motor feed back into the controller. And this little box, which we didn't fully understand at the beginning, and we still don't completely. We know that when you turn the key on in the vehicle, you're going to want to send 12 volts into something. This is the only place in the system that it appears we could send that in. So we took an external 12 volt supply because we don't yet have our DC to DC converter working. We applied a ground and power to it, which closes a relay in this little box. And that allows us to reach over here and push on the throttle rheostat. And as we pull on the throttle rheostat, you can hear the motor starting to hum. And the more I turn it, the faster the motor goes. And even though the vehicle is in neutral, just through, uh, if you go around the side, take a look at the front wheel over there. Go slow, Dale. <laughs> Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's a 7,000 RPM motor. I don't think we've turned it 3,000 <laughs> RPM yet. So it is working right now, we see. I don't see a master disconnect, and I don't see a um, circuit breaker or fuse in the system. And so before we take it out on the road, I think we need to install either a a uh, circuit breaker that'll trip and we can reset it, or a fuse that'll blow and can be replaced, something in the 250 amp range. A couple of things that we've discovered are that this position of this switch makes no difference to me or you as far as being able to test drive the car. And that the brake rheostat does not need to be plugged in in order to run the motor. So we unplugged it, just so we don't have to have it laying around here during our road test. And what turns the system off and on is this little tiny white wire that goes into this box. One end of it's grounded and the other one uh, needs to be switched. But I didn't have a ignition switched circuit out here. But I discovered that this red wire coming out of the firewall is ignition. It goes down here and turns on the vacuum pump to operate the vacuum system when the key's on. So what I did is I connected our little white system on wire to that red ignition wire. So when you turn the key on, the system is on. When you turn the key off, the system is off. And now we have the ability to turn off the system from the ignition switch inside the car going down the road, which I think is so, pretty uh, we're gonna